placed as the next jumping point from a pen tablet, specifically a large pen tablet. I'm going to show you this here. This is the Decal 01 V2. This is one of the you know, nicer pen tablets to have because I think just the texture feel against the plastic of the nib of the pen, it's just so good. I've not met another pen tablet other than the Wacom Intuos Pro um, that has such a good starting surface. And so I really, really like this here. Uh, but it's the same size as a 12 inch Artist, Artist 12, um, second generation. And uh, the working area is the exact same working area that you would have for the Artist 12 second generation as well. Coming over from the 12 non-second generation, this has a fully laminate display. The distance between the nib and that surface is, I think is really, really good. It's really accurate. There's a couple issues where the cursor can come off, which I'll talk about um, later. But basically, um, it's it's just a, like a, a good, you know, 12 inch works great. It's It comes from a large pen tablet already from the size. If you have something like a, a 14 inch laptop, it's gonna fit in your bag. So you're not having to worry about finding out, finding another bag to carry that in. Um, and I think that this is gonna be your best option on being your desk or being on your desk. Now I will say in my past, when I tried to move to a pen display, um, I have a, a 20 inch, no, I have a 22 inch and I have a, a 15 inch. I don't enjoy drawing on those almost ever. Even though they are you know, good in their own remarks, uh, there's too much setup involved for something that is I'm not doing all day. And this it's a little bit better, but this isn't just a pen tablet I can slap at my mouse and draw with. I need to have a lot more setup involved, including the fact that I will need something to prop this up. I can't look straight down and draw on this thing. Now you can be cheap. You can get a couple of books. I have like a little wedge here that you can, I can use to kind of give some elevation. You can buy these pen tablet or pen display stands. I don't recommend those. I'd recommend a a laptop stand. So here is one that I've shown over the years uh, from some of my videos, which is just a laptop stand. It adds a lot of elevation here. So if you need to move it higher up, so it's not always just like a pivot on the desk, you can do so. And I found that a lot more useful and it was just as expensive, if not cheaper than some of these um, display stands that you would get with these laptops. But that is an extra cost you do have to think about. The surface of this is on the smoother side. If you're coming from a pen tablet, you will be disappointed. There's no pen tablet that is as slippery as this, but it's not as slippery as like an Apple Pencil with the hard plastic going against a, gla a glass screen with no screen protector on an iPad. It's better than that, at least. And you can use a felt nib. So I have a version um, with no felt and a version with the felt. There's ever so slightly a bit more resistance. I wouldn't jump into the felt tip just yet. If you can make ways with the standard tip and get used to a little bit more slippier of a surface, I think you will be fine in that regard. And you don't have to spend the extra 10 bucks or whatever it is to get the, um, the I guess, the felt nibs. And I'm only saying that because the felt nibs do wear down a little bit faster than the standard nibs. Do. So you'd be having like a continued investment on wanting the felt nib experience. I think on a pen tablet, it makes more sense, but on a pen display, specifically this one here, where it's a little bit more slipperier, you're not really getting that much value out of it. The other thing I have to talk about is the kind of buttons and the ports. So the buttons here, you get eight on this size. They have these like braille systems. This is not useful for this size of, uh, of a pen display. I can clearly see what it is at, and I'm not, I ha like I, I have full view of this. If this was like a really big pen display, the buttons having these braille systems would be useful. Or if I'm not looking down at what I'm drawing, like on a pen tablet, that would be useful. Now, as I'm talking about that, there is the power control and brightness. There's nothing about contrast. There's nothing to control. There's no um, panels to control the contrast. There's no panels to control the red, blue, green. There's no panels to control the warmth of the display because you can go from a cool to a warm toned co starting color. None of those are available built into this um, display. You have to use the uh, the Windows specific version to be able to control that. So on Mac and on, Lin on Linux, you cannot control the color accuracy of this. And I think that's a kind of a big bummer of this. So if you're looking at these other pen displays and they have like not anywhere close to this color accuracy, maybe look at those as well, because unless you are only working on Windows, this color accuracy doesn't mean anything at, at all, because you can't, you can't color calibrate this. 
it's it's only available for Windows. So if you're specifically a Mac user and you're looking to pick this up, don't don't look at the color stats for this. It doesn't mean anything because it's not going to help you. So beyond that, then you have two ports here. One is meant for a single USB cable. The other is meant for the three prong HDMI, two USBs, one power, one data. And then in terms of versatility, one thing that I really, really was going to hopefully like about this is you get Windows, you get Linux, you get Mac, you get Chrome OS, you get Android. That's a whole lot of different operating systems. So this will last you a very long time if you're moving from Windows to Linux to Mac to Android to Chrome OS. And you don't have to worry about like, okay, well, now I have to buy something separate because this doesn't work on this next system I'm moving to. Or maybe your kid has their own device that you want to let them use it on and you don't want to sit there and buy them a, a different one. I think that's useful. Another thing you can do is you can press and hold on this power button for three seconds. It will turn orange and blink, and then it will go in only in tablet mode, which means the screen turns off and you can use it in tablet mode. Um, this means that if you, maybe your screen is cracked, maybe the backlight dies out and you don't want to use this as a display anymore, you can continue to use it as just a pen tablet. Now that feature is only useful on Windows, Linux, and Mac. On Android and Chrome OS, it does not, it's not useful at all. And I'll go into why later, but it's nice that it's there. And because that this is the same size of the Deco 01 V2, you can just mirror your display and then have that opportunity to draw as a pen tablet anyways, without having to turn off the monitor. Now, in terms of uh, drawing on this, beyond this, the surface and the felt tip, it does get a little warm right here. And from my uh, 15 inch monitor, because it's so big, my hand's not always resting in exactly the spot that it's getting a little toasty yet. It's not like burn your hands hot, but if it's like in a warm area where you're sweating, um, your palm is, you know, it, it's not great. And your hands flying across is already getting warm from just the friction of the pen display. You sit it over here, it gets a little bit warmer. It was just uncomfortable for me. So I will normally wear a glove regardless, even though I, you don't necessarily need to on this pen display. Uh, another thing I ran into is the cursor. So while I said this is a fully laminated display, it's really close together, very accurate. Um, if you enter in this display at a very high tilt, and unfortunately I can't show it here because this is Android, it will be so offset. It's not even funny. You can do color, or uh, you can do calibration. There's a calibration um, uh, option in the drivers for Windows, Linux, and Mac. I will say on Linux, I couldn't get the calibration to show up on this monitor, but on, on Windows and Mac OS, it worked fine. You touch five points. It, color, it, it makes the cursor go exactly where it should be. But if you enter in at like a high tilt, like 80 degrees, that cursor is like so far off where it needs to be and it's never where it actually is for the, uh, the points. So I found that I had to enter in the display at at least a degree tilt, like 45 degrees for it to properly pick up. Because it, when I'm touching some of the small touch points here, I tend to like ranch my, my pen out so I'm not moving my hand so much. And it's sometimes the cursor would be like way over here and I'm not even anywhere close to that. And that's because the tilt is not being read. So it can't actually correctly guess where the cursor needs to be. And again, that's the only like major thing that I was kind of finding annoying. Now with the X3 Elite pen, I've already made a review on it specifically. There's a couple things that are annoying about this pen. One is one thing that ended up being a non-issue is that the nib for me was really wobbly. When I got this pen, which came with, or this pen display that came with this X3 Elite version, the tolerance in the nib was so much better. The, the pen that has the felt tip has the felt tip because it provides a little bit more stability for the nib. It's a little bit chunkier. Um, but the nib for this pen, the same X3 Elite, I guess, uh, pen, it, the nib wasn't so wobbly. So that was one thing I, I made a, a harped on a lot on that uh, review for this pen. It's a lot better. It's not as wobbly. Let me see if I can go ahead and get a little bit of a zoom in here so you can kind of see the difference. I will get a nib remover and you can kind of hopefully see where I'm talking about the actual movement of this nib here. So yeah, I, I can I can barely move it. So there is some movement. It's minor, um, but you know it's it's not a major issue as it was for my Deco M. When I had that actual machine, so it's a it's a pretty good pen. But the bevel on this here, with in combination with the super slim nib, uh, there are if you have it too much of a tilt, I think it was like even like seventy degrees. There's no contact. I can't 
can't draw on here. I have to tilt it up a little bit more to be able to have that. And I generally draw at a higher tilt. So it would be nice if I could have that higher tilt, but it's not possible because the bevel or the design of this pen makes it impossible. I also don't like the button placement. It's a little bit too much of a gap higher than what I would normally want it. And it's fine because I don't normally use the buttons anyways and it's tucked away. But you kind of get the idea. I just don't, there's a couple things with the pen that didn't sit well with me. I like the all plastic design, but there's no, it's just like it's a straight shot all the way down. There's nowhere to like catch your fingers um, that you would have to see in another pen that I'm not going to bring up. I bring up in like every review that as of my favorite pen that even the XP pen makes themselves and they, they just didn't, I, I don't know. They could have just redesigned that pen. I don't know why they made this pen. You do get um, that lightweight activation. I put in air quotes because you do have to apply some pressure. It's not zero. You can't rest this on here and get a drawn experience. You do have to apply a little bit of pressure. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. It's a lot better than their older pen tech that they had. And so you do get that fairly lightweight experience. And it doesn't require any special drivers when you're on Android and when you're in Chrome OS, you're going to get that fairly lightweight activation. Now, I'm going to have to move to Android. Um, there is no hover on Android. There's no hover on Chrome OS. And this was one point uh, I was very sad about because I was hoping with the accuracy of the pen, that the hover probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. But no, it's still a deal breaker for me. I can't do any line art consistently without having to zoom in excessively. So let's say, you know, I wanted to go ahead and make a line here and I want to go ahead and connect this here. I have to make sure I'm zoomed in quite a lot. So if I go ahead and zoom out, a bit more and I try to do that same touch point, I'm not going to be where I want it to be because I can't see the hover of the cursor on Android. And by the way, this is Dex mode. This is running on my S21 here. I can't see it. Now, another thing that was super annoying is that some phones can do a single USB-C cable. So this is my S21. I can't do that. I need to have a single USB-C cable to connect it for Android support mode specifically. So you can't do a USB-C with a dongle, the HDMI, and push and power pass through so you can charge your phone too. This doesn't work. On other pen displays I've tried, this situation does work for Android. This one specifically, you have to have a cable that is a single USB-C cable. And you need ones that support power delivery one, uh, 3.1 and um, display port, port 1.2. You can get any USB-C cable, most likely it's not going to work. You need certain ones. And then on, on top of that, some cables here are a little bit thicker and they won't fit in the port. Even though the port is bigger now, I have a right angle I want to use because I don't like my cables just like shooting straight out to the side. I have this right angle, but it doesn't fit because this is too much. This is a little too thick or too chunky for the port to fit. But beyond that... I need a single USB-C cable. I need a three-in-one cable. Now I need a way to actually charge this or power this display. So then I have to take a battery bank with me. So now I have two extra cables with an octopus cable at the end of it, power to my phone. And then my phone doesn't charge off this battery. Um, I have to have it plugged into the wall for my pen display to push power to my phone. And even then I have to keep my phone off. So it's in dex mode. It can charge very, very slowly. Um, it's actually not even charging fast enough right now. So yeah, it was at 50. Now it's at 49% when I was trying to do this stuff. It depends on what you're doing. So you may get a charge. You may not get a charge. It really depends on your phone. It, like the LG V31 I have here can do a single USB-C cable, but it depends on how much battery is in this phone or how much power it has. So if it's at like below, I think 50%, I can't actually power this display. The brightness of this display also can't go beyond, I think, 50% if you're having a single USB cable coming in from your phone. So there's a certain amount of brightness you can and cannot do. Even when I'm powering it from my battery bank, I can't go beyond 50%. I have to have it plugged into a power socket kit that can correctly adjust for the voltage and amperage needed to push this, even though I think this is like a 7-watt display. It's not much that's needed to actually power this display. But uh, yeah, for Android, it was kind of a letdown. I do have to zoom in quite a lot. It's still a usable experience, but I just really, really wished I had that hover feature for the pen so I can see exactly where it's going to land before it actually lands. On Chrome OS, the story is a lot worse. I've made a YouTube short on this specifically, but basically um, on, a on Chrome OS, you get no pressure, you get no tilt, and you still get no hover. Now, you can put this into pen tablet mode. Um, the problem is, 
that the aspect ratio for Android is skewed. So even though this is a narrow phone, it makes the width of this be the width of this in portrait mode, which then you get this like really oblong um, circle that you would try to draw. You have to draw like an oval to try to get it to show up as a circle on the phone. It's unusable. And when I went to landscape mode, it just did the reverse. So it made the skew just as bad. I don't know why uh, pen tablet mode for this uh, artist second generation series and the artist 12 pro or artist second generation pro series does the same exact thing by the way um, the pen tablet mode just is not useful for a phone and then specifically on chrome because there is no hover because you get no tilt because you get no pressure is it, it does map correctly but i have no idea where my pen would be when in pen tablet mode i have to have in pen display mode more to the point of chrome os you have to have it in mirrored mode so you can't have an extended display if you turn or if you close your laptop lid, your display may turn off and then mirror mode will no longer work and it'll put it back into its own display, which then the pen does not register. So I have to keep my laptop open. I have to have it in mirrored mode. I don't have tilt support. I don't have pressure support. I can't see my hover. So on Chrome OS, it's almost unusable for anything else other than an extra display or maybe note taking. But at that point, this is like a 200 almost sometimes 250 dollar uh price point the chromebook i've tried this on which i can do via a single usb c cable i think that's nice uh is also 250 dollars. so why would you spend <laughs> that much money on a pen display when it when your chromebook is just as expensive i'd rather just get a, a pen tablet a cheap pen tablet to go with the chromebook i don't i can't recommend a pen display uh for for that so like i said this is a great starting point from a pen tablet to a pen display I just, I wouldn't get this specifically for the color accuracy. I wouldn't get this for the Android support, although I don't think any pen display from any other manufacturer is anything better of a solution. And I definitely wouldn't get this for a Chrome OS, uh, for a Chromebook or anything else like that, because it just doesn't make any sense. You're, you're losing so much um, from that perspective. So yeah, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will try to answer them the best I can. And I will have a comparison between this and the Canvas 12 in due time.